So with The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom now out, breaking records, people are having a blast with the game. There were some questions leading up to the release of it that had to do with the cartridge, the file size, and the price. So I figured, you know what, let's try answering some of those questions. One in particular being, did Nintendo actually use a 32 gigabyte cartridge for this game to store it and ship it out physically? And in order to do that, we're going to have to cut the thing open. So if you guys enjoy the video, make sure you like it and subscribe if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel. Now, the main reason I want to do this is I have looked at different Switch cartridges in the past. Small ones versus large ones. I also took a look at Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2 that was the first 32 gigabyte cartridge uh, on the system. And that was very early on in the Switch's life to the point where it was a a, a customized 32 gigabyte cartridge but this is nintendo's first game that comes in seemingly right at 16 gigabytes it's a bit more than that with the day one patch so we all sort of figure that they are using that 32 gigabyte chip however nintendo has never explicitly said that they've only told us that it's ten dollars more than their other full priced first party games now there is one major issue we're going to run into here and i'm gonna do my best to try to figure it out and just deduce different things around the chip inside this cartridge and that's that it's from macronix and it's proprietary for the most part so there's not data sheets out there to my understanding that we can just compare to one to one and be like okay it's this this and this but I think we can at least draw some conclusions here based on other examples we have with different Switch games. But first things first, let's go ahead and cut the cartridge open. I did pick up a physical copy, as you can see here. And don't worry, my plan is to then put the cartridge back together and it still be usable. So I'm not destroying a copy necessarily to, to find this information. Uh, but the, the game itself, the box art, everything, it looks good overall. It has reverse cover art. This was just a really cool release, obviously, for Zelda. Zelda fans with the special edition, but even the regular edition, while $10 more, I, I think does look, look good overall. But as we remove the cartridge here, we will have to open it by essentially cutting around the edges of the plastic. There is a seam that goes all the way around on the sides. And my strategy mostly is to use a, a razor blade of some kind to just slowly work into it. And as soon as I have separation between the two halves, use one that's a bit more dull to then work around the sides of it. Anyway, with the cartridge now opened up, it's exactly as expected. It's a Macronix chip that doesn't even use a PCB. They just started putting contact points on the back of the chip, and it just makes contact with the pins inside of the switch when you insert the cartridge. I assume this is just to save money overall to make these cartridges, but this is very common for a lot of these larger games. And looking at the front of it, you can kind of notice a bunch of numbers here, and this is where we sort of have to start kind of deducing things through use of other images and cartridges that have been taken apart. Now, I have taken some apart here on the channel, and there are a few others that have been pulled apart that we'd be able to match up here. But the main line that you want to look at is MX23K, all right? That seems to identify Macronic's line of switch chips for these cartridges. Right below that, H, it starts HAC-AX. That lines up with the identifier for Tears of the Kingdom itself. All right. So above that, though, with 23K, then we have 256GL1-15Q. And again, there's no actual data sheet that I've been able to find for identifying a lot of this information, but it does look pretty familiar to me as I have had to wade through the world of shopping for flash chips back in the day for doing uh, like custom reproductions that I enjoyed making at one point in time for Super Nintendo games and, and all of this and buying like flash memory to use. I would have to figure out some of the identifiers on the top of the chip to make sure it would actually work for my project. So with MX23K identifying this as a switch chip, the next three numbers here basically is going to tell us what the density of the chip is, specifically the amount of storage it can hold, which is what most people are curious about, I'm, I'm sure, here. But 256 should be the identifier for the how large this chip is, especially when you compare it to other chips. Uh, for, for example, I had done a video where I opened up two different Switch cartridges, giving us an idea as to what the difference between a small file size game and then a large file size game. And you could see MX23K128GL0. 128 would be a 16 gigabyte chip. And indeed, this is for Resident Evil Revelations, which I think is like 12 or 13 gigabytes. 
basically it would need that 16 gigabyte cartridge to ship physically. And you might be wondering why is it divided by eight exactly? Well, when you go from bits to bytes, it's usually divisible by eight to get you to say gigabytes in this case, or back in the day, it'd be like megabits to megabytes. And it seems to hold true across the board, even down to something like one, two switch. I mean, that's what, less than two gigabytes? I think it's like one and a half. So you would use a two gig gigabyte chip for that. Well, on that one, it's actually 16. So again, divided by eight gives you two. Breath of the Wild, that's a 14 and a half gigabyte game. You would need a 128 gigabit chip then. And in fact, that's what it's using. However, I will admit reading data sheets and, and matching up different chips and identifiers, not my strong suit. So I do have the different pictures here. And if you're a bit more versed in that, go ahead and check out all the different numbers you're seeing here on the screen and see what you can come up with. But looking at this chip with 256, it does appear that yes, Nintendo is using a 32 gigabyte chip to ship out Tears of the Kingdom and they're shipping it out in droves, which might actually be good for the, the future of this platform with the switch and then future systems that nintendo would be uh, would be shipping because while a lot of the world is moving to the digital side of things when it comes to buying their games there's still a lot of people who buy them physically and i will admit it is a nice advantage when you get a cartridge for the switch there's no installing you just pop it in and it starts up now there is one other game that is using a 32 gigabyte cartridge on the switch that i can think of and that's the witcher 3. i have the game still sealed so i, I thought about cutting it open and then opening the cartridge to take a look but maybe down the road i'll pick it up used because i think it's pretty cut and dry right now that Nintendo is using this 32 gigabyte cartridge for the Switch. But hey, if anyone out there happens to just have a Witcher 3 copy that was open for some reason, the cartridge, go ahead, take a picture and post it up on Twitter and let me know. Now, I did look at Macronic's website and they seem to point to these extra ROMs, as they're called, as being capped currently at 32 gigabytes. So this might be the biggest chip they can produce in this form factor, at least this setup. And moving to a 64 gigabyte chip may have some sort of jump overall in terms of form factor or just the technology in general. So that could be held maybe for Nintendo's next system if they stick with cartridges, which I think we all assume they will. However, if 32 gigabyte chips like these, which Nintendo shipped what? Uh, they've sold 10 million copies so far of Tears of the Kingdom. Even if it went by a 50% digital to physical rate, they still would have shipped 5 million copies or 5 million 32 gigabyte chips. Makes me think that at this $70 price point now, this is completely feasible to include one of these chips, which means maybe we can start getting rid of some of those white blue banners on the on the box art that says you have to download half the game because the company only feels like including an eight gigabyte or 16 gigabyte chip. And then of course, going to the next system, we assume file sizes will only continue to grow, especially as the capabilities of the system follows with that. So 32 gigabytes, that might be a more common chip and maybe 64, 128 gigabyte. I, I am curious how far they'll, they'll push this thing, especially as these games continue to balloon in size. But yeah, it looks like the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom using a 32 gigabyte chip and Nintendo never really mentioned it at all. They just said, yeah, it's $10 more and everything is on the cartridge minus the day one patch that actually does make it a lot better. But still for collectors or people who uh, are concerned about the preservation of games, it's nice to know that we didn't get a blue and white banner on Tears of the Kingdom because that would have been, uh, been pretty frustrating, even more so than the $10 jump to have everything on the cartridge itself. But let me know what you guys think about this one down below. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.